looking to sell or buy and always been curious about how the appraiser really plays its role in the transaction process? Well, stick around for this video. We'll talk about it. everybody mike petrus here your star realtor of star and the treasure valley I want to welcome you back to another episode here with me to where we're going to go ahead and talk about nothing but appraisals sellers if you are looking to sell this is going to be some great information for you uh buyers too as well if you are looking to purchase using an fha or a va loan uh this also is really going to help you out so that you can understand what it is appraisers are actually doing in their job uh, of course, we all know that appraisers are going out and basically determining the value of the house, but there really is so much more that does come with this. Uh, maybe not so much as we talk about maybe conventional loans or especially cash buys, but if you do have an FHA loan or a VA loan or sellers, if you're looking to attract VA buyers along with FHA buyers and create a whole group of people that want to come visit your place, this is definitely one of those videos you're going to want to go ahead and tune into. And then also at the very end, I will be providing you a, for with a list that you can go ahead and download uh, to be able to help you in your transaction process. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn over to uh, a clip to where I'm going to go ahead and bring up an old document that I went ahead and designed, uh, which goes through this stuff. And we'll get to that right here in just one second. All right. So, hey, if you're new to my channel, uh, first off, I want to go ahead and give you a little bit of background regarding myself. Um, before I jumped into the real estate industry, I actually earned the highest echelon that you can possibly earn in home inspection. And I became a certified master inspector with InterNACHI. Uh, that, as I said, is the highest accreditation I can possibly earn in my field. And I enjoyed it. Uh, but of course, as I started getting older, let's just be honest here, I started feeling it a little bit more as I was crawling through some attics and crawl spaces. And so I decided to go ahead and make a move over. Uh, but still, it was invaluable. Uh, invaluable to know uh, the construction process in and out and to be able to help people understand what they were facing in their homes before they made that purchase. So for me, very, very rewarding job. Uh, but it also allowed me the opportunity to go ahead and know what it is that are also appraisers are looking for, which gave me an edge as a home inspector. So as an invaluable home inspector for my realtors, I was able to go in there, especially if there was an FHA or a VA buyer, and kind of give a heads up of what it would take to basically create a preemptive strike to what could possibly hold up the sale according to an appraiser. Now, again, if you're going in and you're trying to buy in cash, uh, the appraiser is generally not going to be there. Um, of course, cash deals will have appraisers if you request it and they will go in and do their job and then the negotiation process can start from there. Uh, conventional too as well. Uh, the appraisers will 95% of the time going to be there uh, because the banks definitely want to know the value of the property and they don't trust anybody else but themselves. Uh, but when it comes to basically their checklist uh, of being able to for like living conditions, heating, cooling, all that kind of stuff. They really kind of don't dive into it too, to it too much in the conventional loan process as they would FHA or VA loans. So in this case, I'm, this is what we're going to go ahead and tackle. Uh, they are known as MPRs or minimum practice requirements, uh, which FHA and VA loans require. Now, VA loans can generally be a little bit more stickler. Uh, because the Veterans Administration really wants their properties to be turnkey uh, for their veterans. Uh, they don't want their veterans moving into something that's going to go ahead and fall apart and fall down. Uh, same thing too as well with FHA. They're not going to put you in kind of any health or safety risk situations or again, that the house is going to fall apart. Uh, again, uh, well, 
not again, but VA loans too as well. Uh, they are going to be looking at the health, health and safety aspects of it too. So let's go ahead and let's dive into my list here. Now, this was proprietary. I went ahead and I designed this and I did make some adjustments, of course, across the states too as well. Um, other states having a little bit more maybe hardcore requirements than say we've got here and what they expect their builders to do according to the authority having jurisdiction. Uh, but we're going to go and touch upon some of this because again, I will be leaving this list for you at the end of this video. I do recommend that you go ahead and click down below uh, to the link so that you can get to the file, download it. And if you are looking to sell, especially, and you want to prepare your house uh, for an FHA or VA buyers to come through, this will be the list that you want to go through and make sure you check off. Uh, so that you can have everything ready and the appraiser won't give your buyer that might have an FHA or a VA loan a hard time. So living areas, uh, yeah, no more than four, four units are allowed for the living area, okay? So if there is a fifth, is there you know, a fiveplex instead of a fourplex, uh, they will not allow that. So no more than four units sharing laundry, storage, and utility rooms, okay? Uh, non-residential use purpose area is not to exceed 25% of the total floor area or impair the residential character of the property. So for example, if the garage was larger than the rest of the house, because we know that really the garage is not livable area, or if there's a non-livable area of more than 25%, that's what they're basically saying, okay, is that you have to have more living space than none. Uh, each living unit also must ensure living, sleeping, cooking, dining accommodations, and sanitary facilities. So if you're looking at a house, say, say for in particular, and you're an FHA or VA buyer, and it happens to be missing a stove, um, you know, or actually as we get down this list a, bit, a little bit more, if it happens to be, say, missing heating, okay, not cooling, heating, that'd be another issue as we kind of pop along. But it does have to have... Uh, your sanitary facilities too. So you have to have your restrooms and they just make sure that that's there. Uh, mechanical systems. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about HVAC. So we're talking about your, your uh, heating and your cooling. The heating is going to be the one that's required and the cooling will not be. Uh, actually in most states, cooling is not required. Um, if you are watching this beyond Idaho, I would definitely check with your authority having jurisdiction and your local codes uh, to see whether or not they are going to require cooling in your area. Uh, but most do not, and you do have to have the heating because again, without heating, you can get sick. And that's gonna be the thing. They don't want anybody getting sick. They don't want anybody dying in their house. And if you're going to get really, really cold, that can happen to you. So that is the key here. So what they're just trying to say is that the mechanical systems are safe to operate, protected from destructive elements, and have reasonable future durability, economy, and have adequate capacity and quality. So what they're basically saying, and the appraiser will be looking for, is at that unit to make sure that it's operating, okay, to make sure that it's heating, okay, rooms, and that the, all the rooms that are applicable that need to be heated, okay, which is all living spaces, et cetera, just basically minus bedrooms and, or sorry, not bedrooms, minus bathrooms and closets, okay. Really, if you look at most codes, that's not going to be a requirement, but that also doesn't say that your builder won't do it or the builder didn't do it. Uh, but if you do come across where that might be the deal, don't exactly fret it because the local codes or the authority having jurisdiction in that case may not have thought about it. But if the unit looks old, it's in disrepair, it looks like it needs to be serviced or even replaced, I can guarantee you the appraiser will call it out and sellers, the, the appraiser will make it a condition, especially if there's FHA or VA, or even conventional in this case, to where they'll make you replace it before they'll actually fund on the home. All right, so heating has to provide healthy and comfortable living conditions and the heat source and habitable rooms. Again, bathroom and closets do not apply in this case sometimes. But again, check your local, your authority having jurisdiction, your local codes. They could be a little bit different. Um, one of the ones that some people don't, do not know about is, uh, say you're moving out, uh, somewhere in the woods. Okay. Or somewhere to where they just have the wood burning, 
the stove as a primary heating source. Well, FHA and VA requirements are also going to have require a secondary system be installed so that it can maintain a temperature of at least 50 degrees in the home. So you can't just rely on a wood burning stove alone to be able to heat the house. They will want a secondary system or they will not fund on FHA or VA loans. Now this is one with conventional that they might go ahead and let bypass. Okay, so again, if you're conventional, you're looking at a house like that, you may not trip chip because they may not, uh, they may not require for that to happen. But again, uh, kind of check to see what's going on. And if the appraiser does call that out, even on a conventional loan, well, that'll be another issue sellers that you'll have to go ahead and tackle to make sure that the loan gets funded. Uh, solar heating and domestic hot water systems. Okay, so basically solar heating, uh, domestic hot water he he heater systems. So if you are uh, heating from solar panels and it is uh, dumping into a basically a hot water system, it must be backed up with a conventional system that's going to work. So you can't just have a solar system that's going to go ahead and dump into your hot water heater. You will have to have a conventional system behind it. So either a electric hot water heater or a gas hot water heater to work full time or else they will not fund on it. And then, of course, the home has to possess a domestic hot water heater, as we know, and continuous supply and safe and potable water for drinking and other household uses. Uh, sanitary facilities, of course, have to be there and a safe method of sewage disposal. Uh, for FHA and VA, I went and put this, require all well and septic systems to be further evaluated by a qualified professional. So if you are purchasing you know, a home that is that does have a well and septic, they're going to want to see water quality samples uh, taken out of your wells. They're going to want to make sure that the well is performing up to tip top shape. And of course, they're going to want to make sure that your septic system is also functioning the way that it does and doesn't have any deficiencies. So inspections will definitely be required for those. So FHA, VA buyers, if you are heading into somewhere that does have well and septic, just be geared up to pay for inspections additionally. And I highly recommend that you do it anyway. Uh, you're gonna wanna know the condition of those systems, but they are gonna require that that gets done. As we're scrolling down, some of you are probably like, well, wait a minute, really, they're gonna look at the roof? Of course they will. They're, not, they're gonna make sure that the roof does have reasonable life. Uh, most appraisers, are they going to know uh, roof conditions like I would as a master home inspector? Uh, probably not. But there are appraisers out there that are educated in that. Uh, they're going to be looking for damaged shingles. They're going to be looking at the granular coating that's going to be across the roof. Uh, and that will kind of basically give them the two cents of what kind of condition the roof might be in. And just like an inspector coming along and saying, well, I recommend a roofing professional to come out here and take further evaluations. They might just very well go ahead and say, I don't think that roof has any life left. I recommend that you get it replaced. And again, sellers, if the appraiser is diving into that, they will require that before any funding can come down the line. So just kind of know that that could be uh, on the table. Um, some of them are smart enough to, to know that there's no more than two layers of shingles that are allowed. So if they come in and they see multiple layers, uh, just basically a neglected roof all the way around, uh, layer after layer after layer, uh, they will also say, well, we're going to recommend that you go ahead and replace it. So again, FHA, VA, and even conventional in this aspect will probably dive in and can hold up the sale of the house if these conditions aren't met. Crawl spaces. Welcome to the Boise area, everybody. <laughs> Crawl spaces are everywhere around here, around the Treasure Valley. If you are on a house with a slab, you are one of the rare that do have it. Uh, so if you have a cr uh, crawl space, one of the things, most appraisers, okay, first off, even though FHA and VA requirements do tell appraisers to poke in the crawl spaces, they're, in other words, kind of asking the appraiser to go into these areas and the attics too as well to look for issues, but none of them ever do. <laughs> and if I were to ever see, and if I ever did see an appraiser that came in with me as a part of their job, I would have been completely shocked. Um, even though they're supposed to, according to new regulations, again, they don't. 
uh, generally, but they will open up the hatch and they'll kind of generally look around. So what they're going to be looking for is, are the joists, do they have proper clearance from the ground? Uh, is there pooling water down there? Is there excessive dampness that's to the soils? Uh, they'll also be looking for debris. Uh, how much construction material is still left down there? Uh, how, many, how much other junk is down there? Uh, for example, say you had your furnace that was in, an old furnace that was in the crawl space area and you never removed it. That could be something that the appraiser might call out and say, I want you to go ahead and remove. And if you do, you'll have to get it done in order for them to fund. So crawl space is generally the area, the things that they will be looking for. If they're going to be popping your attic ass access hatch, they're probably going to be looking for uh, microbial growth mainly, okay, and maybe even insulation levels. Uh, for example, say they popped up and they noted that your insulation levels, like you didn't have any, uh, they'll probably call that out and say, well, we're not going to have you purchase a home that could be freezing cold. Uh, so they will require insulation. Now, there is a grandfathered rule. If they're looking at an older home, they'll probably know or generally be smart enough to know uh, that they're not going to have you upgrade the insulation. They'll probably go with what is existing. But if there's nothing up there, then they might say something different to you. Okay. All right. Electrical, of course, they're going to want lighting present to the house. Um, any, any high voltage, uh, electric transmission lines that they're not going to be within the easements of the house. Um, and then any detached building partially located within the transmission line to the easement will not receive a VA purposes. If that's even on a, a building partially located. So there's things going on with that. Also, I have seen appraisers go as far with FHA and VA loans that if there's any exposed wiring or any wiring that's outside of a junction box, like say you've got splices that were never placed into a proper junction box, they might turn around and say, well, we want that done. Now that's probably more of a home inspector thing than an appraiser, but it again, depends on how smart the appraiser is. For example, if I dropped real estate in, in particular and knowing my background as a certified master inspector, I would be, be bringing more knowledge into the appraisal role if I got my licensure into it. So at that point, I would be diving a lot more into health and safety than probably your average appraiser. So again, nobody really knows, or sorry, nobody does know the appraiser that's going to be showing up. Uh, they just go ahead and they order them and then the bank, and they order the appraisers and the appraisers will show up because you're not allowed to know, you know, who's popping over just because of the rules. Uh, but if they're very educated, they could be one of those sticklers. All right. Hazards and defective conditions are going to be the next stop on our trip here. Uh, of course, as I mentioned before, this house, if you have an FHA or a VA loan in, in particular, uh, it's got to be free of hazards, which may adversely affect the health and safety of the occupants. Again, as, as I was just talking about electrical, um, if there's any exposed wiring or maybe the service drop is within reach, or maybe there's trip hazards, fall hazards, anything along those lines, uh, the appraiser will call it out and ask that these be addressed before they fund, especially on FHA and VA loans. So sellers, be prepared for that. Realtors of your sellers, please also download this list. I highly encourage that you take it if you are a realtor and uh, you are watching this video, take it, use it, please. Because again, it just sets up your sellers to be able to, to, be able to sell their home effectively. Uh, even if you are working with an FHA or a VA buyer, also take this list, memorize it so that you know if you come across that house that may be full of hazards or things that you know that the appraiser might be looking for, you'll know to go ahead and scratch that home off the list because you just will know that FHA or VA or maybe even conventional in some, uh, some points, all depending on really what's going on, may not fund on the property. So and that's something you can be able to tell your, uh, your buyers as well. Uh, they're also going to look at the structural soundness of the home. They're going to make sure this home is not going to fall apart. So, um, you know, any excessive cracking to your foundation, um, any differential settlement, which in the, in, in the inspection industry is basically saying that you're, hey, your house is sinking in this particular area. I know that appraisers are pretty smart when it comes to like, say, rafter spread. 
Um, if you would like to look that up, I do uh, recommend that you do because uh, it will be looking basically at the ridge line or the peak of the home and seeing if there's any sag going off to the uh, raptor tails too as well and see if the roof is kind of coming down. Uh, believe it or not, that happens. And older homes too that don't have, uh, say, uh, roof joists, okay, in the manner that they, they have them today or even collar ties, you can kind of see that when it comes to weight loads, especially to snow loads, okay, that come here in the Treasure Valley. I know as a master inspector, that was one thing that I always looked for when it came to an older home, uh, just making sure that the structure was good. But your average everyday appraiser, okay, is going to take a look at these things. And some of them also might not be as experienced as say me, myself, who is also a master inspector. So I've seen appraisers in the past make mountains out of a molehill. So they'll see a small crack in the foundation wall and they will call out a structural engineer to come and evaluate it. Now that doesn't happen often. You know, most appraisers know a small crack from something that could be a little bit more important. Okay, like differential settlement. Uh, but I've seen it happen. So sellers, if they do do it, I'm sorry, you really are at the mercy of the appraiser and they will probably go in and say, make sure that everything is cleared. And at that point, you can talk to foundation specialists probably too as well and get things done. So just another little tip as you're moving along as the seller. And of course, um, anything that impairs the customary use and enjoyment of the property by the occupants. occupants. So they're just going to make sure that you're going to be able to enjoy the house and there's nothing that's really going to make it unlivable or undesirable for you, okay? Uh, conditions which will impair the safety, sanitation, or structural sound mint. So again, they're going to be looking for uh, defective construction, poor workmanship, evidence of continuing settlement, excessive, excessive dampness like in the crawl space, leakage. So if they come across and they see uh, stains on the roof, uh, they might say that the roof might be leaking and at that point they'll make you go in and fix it before they will fund. Um, out here in the Treasure Valley, we're a little bit more on the drier climate as say some other coastal states. Uh, but in uh, those coastal states, they will require you to have what's known as a section one clearance, uh, which would be making sure that there is no termites to the house or any excessive dry rot to your framing members. Uh, and of course, dry rot is a fungus that if you maintain over 20% moisture that gets into your wood over time, will start decaying it. And once it's in, really, you just have to replace the wood to get rid of it. It will continue to do its work until it completely damages the member. Uh, out here in the state of Idaho, they do not require section one clearances like they do in some other states. Uh, but again, um, Who's to say that that's going to be around the corner? And if it is, they're going to want to know uh, that you are free and clear. One of the biggest ones that I see appraisers catch all the time is grading. Uh, grading needs to come away from the house. Sellers, this is critical for you. Now, let me tell you a little bit about construction. Uh, when they are backfilling, especially here in the Treasure Valley, they do recess their crawl spaces. So they dig down, they have their foundation walls go below grade, and then they will go ahead and they will backfill after they put, of course, their damp proofing on the, on the exterior portion of the foundation walls. Uh, but when they backfill, and this is what I want you to know, and what's the most important thing, is that they're not going to come in and they're not going to tamp down the backfill to a really hardcore packed. Okay, like they would do if they are prepping your area to lay a foundation. Okay, and the reason that they do this is so they, do, they don't break the foundation wall because that's heavy machinery that they're using that can easily break the wall. Uh, so just know as it rains over time, the soils in mother nature is gonna do its job and it's gonna flatten out those soils or even at sometimes pitch the soils back in towards your home. So if there is an FHA or a VA buyer that is gonna show up at the house and you accepted that offer, just kind of know that the appraiser might come in and say, well, you know what, we can't have any pooled water against your foundation or any water that's pooling, you know, excessively around the perimeter of the house. And they will require you to regrade. Now, if they do, go get some soils, go get what you need and just kind of repack that. Just know that the requirement is a six foot drop and a 10 foot span, okay? Which really in the grand scheme of things isn't really all that much, all right? So if they do call that out, just kind of a little bit of elbow grease, get in and get it taken care of 
and they'll be happy and they'll go ahead and they'll sign off on it. Because again, uh, below they're, they're just trying to prevent the ponding of water on the site and prevent any chance of wood destroying insects, fungus, or dry rot. Uh, again, we're in a little bit of a drier climate out here. So rot it cannot be as, maybe as prevalent. And then also termites, they do exist out here. A lot of people, it depends on who you talk to. They say, oh, termites, they don't exist out here. It's too cold for them. Now, I've seen them, okay? If you give any, if you give the termites a cold, damp area, they can move in and they will start doing their work. All right. Um, so again, there is no section one clearances out here in Idaho, but if you are in another state and you do find yourself watching this video, uh, then you'll kind of know about it, what you need to do. Lead-based paint is going to be our next stop on this. Uh, so any house that was built before 1978, uh, will require a lead-based paint. Uh, first off, disclosure in the real estate world. So you'll have to sign up and say, hey, here's the deal. You'll also see it uh, in the contract if you're submitting a purchase and sales agreement to where they're acknowledging you know, the potential of lead-based paint. Get yourself a brochure and you get to read up on it. So before 78, lead-based paint uh, did exist. And contractors, here's another wonderful thing. So contractors really don't stop using their materials until they run out. Uh, so if there was uh, defects to some products that you could probably still see them years after they were actually banned. Um, and in this case, you probably could see lead-based paint being used on a house anywhere up into the very early 80s, okay? Or maybe even late 70s, um, just a couple more years until we get to the 80s. But if there is shipping, flaking paint, et cetera, that's gonna be on the house. I can guarantee with an FHA or a VA loan, they will call it and they will say, well, okay, well, you need to go ahead and remedy that. Uh, most of the case, just go ahead and scrape the paint, paint over it. And as long as they're not seeing the flakes, then you should be fine. Uh, I have seen some cases uh, to where the appraiser has said, has gone a lot more into detail and actually wanted people to repaint the house. I've only seen it once or twice. And at that point, you're scraping and you're going to be uh, putting a layer on the home, which is known as bitumite, which it really tastes like a rotten aspirin to kids if they were to go ahead and put paint chips into their mouth and really uh, deters them from doing that. Uh, not in all cases, they'll just say, go ahead and scrape the paint and paint over. Uh, but either way, I can't guarantee you what they're going to want to do. Just rely on the appraisal report, uh, what they want done. But just know anything before 78, the lead-based aspect will come into it. And FHA VA buyers and sellers that are looking for FHA or VAs and just more people coming in, guarantee they'll call it out. Okay. Um, if you're in a duplex, uh, I see this a lot. So adjoining buildings must be separated by a firewall. And that firewall is going to be for houses pretty much pre-90s or pre eh, about actually mid-80s. You'll probably see a half-inch drywall, uh, which is going to be rated for a half an hour burn time. Uh, today, they're using type X or even a type C drywall, uh, which is a five eighths inch drywall and is rated for an hour burn time. So, and that will have to go all the way from the bottom to uh, the roof, uh, even in garages and you're coming in and there's excessive holes or cuts uh, to your garage drywall. If, especially if it's all enclosed and you do have say a living space above. So say you got a you know two story and there's a bedroom above or even just a room, uh, they'll require repairs to be made to the drywall before they fund. Uh, if there's tape lines coming down, they're gonna want those to be repaired too as well. So again, key here, uh, townhouses, semi-detached uh, units, duplex condos, uh, even your own garage on a single family home, that drywall does become critical. Uh, on older homes, uh, drywall is definitely, you could be missing. And if it's there, especially for an FHA or not there, for an FHA or VA loan, the appraiser might come in and say, well, I would like to see you install drywall. And then you'll have to go ahead and install it to where there's living uh, space above. And of course, to walls that are attached to the living space of the home. Another one kind of going a little bit deeper into with the, uh, the fire rating or sorry, the firewalls in the garage will be the fire door. Uh, most people don't know that your garage door that leads out into the garage is a solid 
20 minute burn door. Okay, so that's going to be solid wood, and it's going to be a minimum of an inch and, and three eight, or sorry, an inch and three eighths minimum depth for that door, and it needs to be solid. Uh, nowadays, those doors are much, much thicker. And um, if you went ahead and say you cut in a cat door or a dog door, that's going to be something that the appraiser will call out and say, well, I want you to go ahead and replace the door, especially if you accepted a contract for an FHA or a VA buyer, they'll definitely want that. And maybe even in some cases conventional, they might come across and say, well, I'm going to go ahead and have you replace the door if you've compromised it. Uh, if you are a buyer, and you're going into a new home or even a home that has the firewall intact, please don't cut it, don't do it. And those doors, they're not cheap either, they're expensive, okay? To have them professionally installed too as well, they get even more expensive. Uh, so just don't cut them, they are there to protect. There are some cat and fire doors, uh, cat and dog doors that they make now that are fire rated uh, that you can go ahead and purchase and you can safely cut that door but always advise with the manufacturer before you buy a cat or a dog door, make sure that it does have some fire rating. But again, just generally not a good idea to do it. Uh, even if you're trying to say install a door that leads from a laundry area that goes into the garage and you punch through the wall. Again, if you compromise the garage firewall or the drywall that's encapsulating the garage, then you've also created a code violation to where the appraiser might call it out and not be able to fund until you make the repairs. So again, things do need to be in place. Uh, if you would like some more information on that, please feel free to reach out to me. You can call me at 208-715-7827. Be more than happy to go through it with you just to kind of make sure that uh, everybody's on the same page on that one. Water quality. Uh, again, earlier in this film, if you are uh, you know, VA or FHA and you do have a well and septic, they will make you have additional inspections on these. They're going to want to make sure uh, that your home is or your well and septic is up to snuff. So they're going to want to make sure that your water quality is good. Uh, not too much arsenic uh, levels in there, not too many nitrates in, in your water. Um, and then is the depth correct too as well? Or is it, is it near a contamination source? Is it gonna be far enough away, say for you, from the leach field? And when it comes to VA requirements, they want proof of that. They're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's far enough away according to code. Sewage disposal systems too as well. Uh, say for example, if you have a sewage ejector in the uh, basement, they're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is functioning. Okay, and doing what it needs to do to be able to eject sewage out of the home. If you do have a manufactured home, a couple of things to look for. Um, if you're FHA or VA and you're a realtor and you're watching this video, or even if you're a buyer and you're watching this video, or even a seller, if the house was built uh, after or before June 15th, 1976, um, FHA and VA won't even lend on it. Uh, also, if it's not on a permanent foundation, FHA and VA won't lend on it. So buyers, if you're trying to get a manufactured home and you're trying to go in with an FHA or a VA, those need to be there. There also needs to be plates on the manufactured home uh, that says uh, that it was HUD approved because that's when HUD took over was July 15th, 1976. And if the plates aren't there, they can hold you up until they are there. And I really, in my entire career, a uh, 15 plus year career of inspections, um, and working with major home builders too as well. I know only of one place that, that you can actually get replacement plates from. So that is something that is going to be critical if you're looking for a manufactured home. So one of the more obvious things that um, appraisers will be looking for when it comes to FHA and VA uh, requirements and their NPRs are gonna be smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. So, and according to modern day code now, uh, smoke detectors are required in every single room and every hallway leading to every room. They are, especially carbon monoxide detectors are, are required where the hallways are leading to all bedrooms too as well. Uh, anywhere that you have a gas or a wood burning appliance are also required in that room. And they're gonna be required downstairs and upstairs of any stairwell. So just kind of know that placement for your carbon monoxide detectors. But if you are missing carbon monoxide detectors in the home, you are missing smoke detectors in the home, that is one thing that they will bring up to modern day code. So even if your house 
you know, the home that you're trying to sell back then did not have the requirement that it has today for smoke detectors or carbon monoxide detectors, FHA and VA will move up to current code and require you to do those so that they can fund on those loans. So sellers, that's one thing to go ahead and tackle right now. Realtors, if you're walking through the house, you have this list and you notice them missing, go ahead and encourage your sellers to go ahead and place them in. It's a very, very inexpensive thing to do, and it will be more inexpensive than having the appraiser come in, say you need to get it, then leave, require you to do it, and then charge you to come on back to the house for a reinspection fee. I saw that as a home inspector all the time with appraisers, so it's just it's a great preventative action. Go ahead and do that. And I've kind of got a little bit about the background with all this too, so that you kind of kind of know uh, where, where what was required where over the years. But again, it is recommended now. They are going to want to uh, go have you upgrade all that for FHA and VA guidelines. Some additional notable conditions just to pay attention to. Uh, if you have a stairwell and you're missing your handrail or guardrails, they're going to want you to have those in. Um, if you have a deck and it's any higher than 30 inches from the ground, they're going to want to see a guardrail system in there. And if it's not there, they'll call you and have you install it or they'll call it out for installation before they'll fund. And handrails are required as stairs that have four or more risers, four or more risers. Okay, so if you're going one, two, three, four, you will definitely need a handrail there. Anything underneath that, you won't. If we're going back to the deck, again, 30 inches or higher from the ground, if it's just below that 30, they won't. But again, not every appraiser is as knowledgeable as say I am uh, being a certified master inspector, uh, but don't bank on it. Another one that you got is Bolster spindles uh, on those handrail guardrail systems. If they are greater than a four inch span, span and you can go ahead and fit a spear in between that, then they can go ahead and call that. Uh, also that triangular space that you usually got from uh, the bottom rail to where you have uh, your tread, so your riser and your landing. Uh, if, if a six inch spear or more can fit in between that, then they'll go ahead and call that too as well. Um, Stairs, when they're 30 inches off the ground and you can fit a four inch sphere between open risers, they'll also might call that and say, well, you need to go ahead and seal that up so kids can't get trapped in between that or be able to get through it and be able to fall. So again, the four inch sphere rule is very important. That's also something that is not generally grandfathered. And what I mean by grandfather is that the appraisers will consider a modern day code except instead of what the code dictated back when the home was built. So whatever the code was back when it was built is what's known as grandfathering. As an inspector, you definitely wanna know how that applies so that you're not calling something modern to be happening on a older home. But appraisers are a different ball game when it comes to FHA and VA. Again, with smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, things like this, they're going to look at modern day codes and require you to bring it up to standards most likely. Again, I'm not the appraiser, but you can almost kind of guarantee that it might happen. Grippable handrails. Can I hold on to it? Um, so many times I see decks and stairwells where I'm coming down from the deck to where they're using uh, an ungrippable handrail they're using a two by six and you just can't hold on to it if you were to able if you were falling so again they have to be grippable you have to get on there lights and stairwells is another one uh, up and down the stairs has to be lighted <laughs> of course that's a no-brainer you, you don't want to go down a stairwell that's dark if you trip and you go down it can seriously injure you or worse Cracked or damaged exit doors that are inoperable they or inoperable doors they'll probably call out cracked window glass minor plumbing leaks, so they come across it, they happen to open up that uh, hatch, or they're even looking underneath the sink, and they notice pooled water, which appraisers will do. They will open up your sink doors and see if there's any pooled water there. They will call that out. Um, now, this doesn't exist here, uh, unless if the hot water heater is actually not an FBIR. Now, most, first off, let me go ahead and explain what an FBIR is. So it's called flammable vapor ignition resistance. So there's screens, okay, and there's protection devices in your hot water heater that protect fumes coming from gas cans, okay, and other, say, paint fumes, anything flammable from being able to come into the combustion chamber of your hot water heater and go boom, 
and be able to start a fire or be able to leach that fire from the fumes leading to an ignition source somewhere. Hot water heaters before 2003 most likely did not have the FVIR because that's when they really came into play with all uh, manufacturers. So if you still do have a hot water heater that was built in 2003 or earlier, uh, and it's not an FVIR protected hot water heater, then it will have to be on an 18 inch riser from the garage floor. So that way it's not taking in those vapors to be able to combust and possibly create a fire. If it is an FBIR out here in this state of Idaho, you can go ahead and put it right on the ground. <laughs> they don't have an issue. But other states, uh, if you are watching this from out of state, they could very well still require you to be on the riser regardless. And especially even regardless, if you have an electric hot water heater, they still might require you to have it on the riser. Uh, so again, any hot water heaters built before 2003 or have to be on the riser. If, they have, if they're built after the fact, you can pretty much put them on the ground as long as you can confirm, confirm that it's an FVIR uh, hot water heater. All right, thanks for sticking in there with me. Just took a real quick break here because I want to separate this part of the, the video here for you and really kind of talk about it. And that's gonna come down to egress of the bedrooms. Um, older homes, did not have the requirements, obviously, that we have today uh, when it comes to being able to get out of the bedroom. Uh, today is requiring a 5.6 square foot opening that you can exit from in the bedroom to be able to get out. If there isn't, say, an exterior door or a sliding glass door, et cetera, that provides that opening for you. So if it is just the window, they are looking for a height of 24 inches by 20. Uh, that you have to find. So again, 5.6 square feet opening of that window to be able to get out. So older homes that you're going to see here in the Treasure Valley probably will not have that. And I really wanted to kind of separate this spot because at that point with FHA and VA requirements, it can get a little hairy in terms of what the appraiser ends up doing. That is a grandfathered situation uh, to where they kind of got to respect that rule to a degree. So some appraisers might not call it out, but might make the suggestion that you go ahead and open up the egress so that you can get out. Um, if this is a basement, for example, and say you don't have enough modes of egress, they will definitely call that and say you need to be able to get out. Um, also, when you're talking about wells, how deep are they? Do they require a ladder? Are they you know, meeting modern day code? Are they in specific areas? How many... Uh, how many areas do you need to get out of? And that's something you will definitely need to check with your local authority having jurisdiction. So if you are selling your house, you do have a basement, go on down, ask and see if you're in compliance. Because if you're not at that point, then you're gonna want to say, well, maybe we shouldn't accept FHA or VA buyers. And in some cases, even conventional appraisers may not allow that ha to happen too. Or they may just say, well, you can't use it as a living area, period. So get rid of anything that says bedroom written all over it. And again, this is something you're going to see and come up with within older homes. But there also is times that the FHA and especially VAs will come in even on older homes and say, well, I want the egress to be up to modern day code so that you can go ahead and get out. Okay. And they will require that to happen. So uh, VA buyers, FHA buyers, if you're looking at older homes and they do have a basement or they do have rooms that you're not able to get out of, or say they have even bars on the windows that don't have a quick release so that you can get out to be able to press on a pedal and get out, they might require all these repairs to be done before they'll actually fund on the house. So kind of keep that in mind as you're going through these older homes and sellers too as well when you're trying to accept an FHA or a VA buyer, uh, also be aware of that, that the appraiser might come in and say, well, they're not going to fund or they'll, they'll advise, tell the banks, no funding until these conditions get taken care of. So it could be a little bit of a disheartener for you if you've gone that far into it. So let's go ahead and let's kind of continue on, but I did want to take that break, isolate that portion of the video so that you know. And again, if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me, 208-715-7827. Even if you're a realtor and you're watching this, please feel free to reach out to me because I'm also a master inspector. Even though I don't practice anymore and I will not go out and represent your, uh, your buyers, 
I will still be more than happy to take the time out of my day to be able to explain to you how these rules really apply and where you can get the information. So moving on, another thing that the appraiser is going to look for is so trip hazards. One of the most common spots that you're going to see trip hazards are your walkways. Are the walkways really cockeyed to where your concrete is offset and somebody can trip? Okay, or maybe you got protrusions coming up out of the grass and they can trip on it uh, or anywhere, I'm sorry, anywhere within walking surfaces that you can trip on. They're going to be looking at that and say, well, you might want to go ahead and take, it, uh, take care of that. Uh, Asbestos-based products. That's also up to how smart the appraiser is. Uh, do they know what zonalite is, okay, or vermiculite? Um, I do, but again, I'm also a certified master inspector. But who's to say that they're going to go ahead and open up the hatch on a house pretty much pre, pre 50s, okay, and be able to see that product and know uh, what's going on? Or say they come in and see any other asbestos based product, um, usually with popcorn ceilings. I, uh, you know, again, I've seen popcorn ceilings that had asbestos uh, in it all the way up until about 1981, but most of them don't know that, or they're not going to go that far into it. And as long as you're not disturb disturbing the popcorn, you're going to be okay. Uh, here we go. We talked about this earlier when we we're talking about drywall in the garage and, and firewalls. Uh, again, the garage door, don't compromise it. Don't compromise your garage fire rated door for a doggy door or a cat door. Just don't do it. Or people don't put a kick prop on it either. I've also seen appraisers call that out saying that the door needs to close at all times. Most of you know about that spring loaded hinge that's on your garage door and it's called a bomber hinge. If it's not working properly either and your door is not closing automatically at all times, then that's another thing the appraiser might call out and say, I want you to get that taken care of. So sellers just know that that door also has to close on its own. So something to take care of right away. They'll also be looking for microbial growth. So they come across mold mildew. They will call that out and say that they want remediation to happen before, before they advise for anything to be funded. And again, visible signs of water intrusion in the house, roof leaks, et cetera, which we've already really kind of addressed. So I know it seems like a lot, but really, if you have this checklist, again, I'm going to call you to action. I'm going to say, go ahead and go down in the description, click on that link, download this document. It is absolutely free for you. Sellers, go through it one by one, check the boxes and say, wow, okay, all this is good with my house. And if you need to review this video again, because I mentioned something that's not on this list, Review it again and go through and make the corrections necessary so that you are not going to get pinged by the appraiser and there can be things that hold up the sale of your home. Uh, buyers too, and realtors of buyers, buyers agents, go through, take this list with you. If they really like the house and they're FHA or VA buyers, take the two, the five minutes out of your day. Uh, and just kind of go through and check these and look around the house. And if it's the case, you will know whether or not this house will be a pain for you if you're trying to get your buyers to get it. Or it could even save the heartache if it's a house that you know that FHA or VA will not fund on. I, again, VA is going to be more stickler generally with a turnkey uh, property. So they're going to want everything generally ready to go than say maybe FHA but FHA can be sticklers. And again, even conventional loans with some of these conditions, okay, can even call it out and say, I will not advise for anything to be funded until these things are taken care of. So uh, I went ahead and wrote this big disclaimer here because what I'm trying to tell you everybody is that I am not a licensed appraiser. I am a real estate agent. I am a certified master inspector. I am not, again, an appraiser. So these are just general things, general MPRs uh, that I've noticed from my experience as a certified master inspector or things that I've gotten from lenders directly from over the years and from authority having jurisdiction to be able to kind of compile, to be able to help you, to help you in the sale of your house. Uh, it doesn't mean that an appraiser won't come along and call out something that you didn't even think that they might call out. For example, one quick story, one little antidote here. I did a home inspection on a house that had a uh, leaky rust through gutters and the appraiser called it, it called it out and said, I want you to replace the gutters around the house because the water was bypassing the gutter and getting close to the foundation and pulling next to the foundation. So it kind of applied, but again, 
people were looking and saying, why the gutter? So again, just want to reiterate, I'm not a licensed appraiser. I am a realtor. If you have qu further questions about this, contact an appraiser, please. I highly recommend that you do if you have more uh, questions or if you just have general inspection questions too as well uh, and how this kind of applies and rolls itself into the appraisal process, uh, please feel free to give me a call. Again, 208-715-7827. More than happy to go through this information with you, uh, but please feel free to print. Uh, again, feel free to click on the link below, print this out, bring it with you. At least it gives you a heads up and an understanding of what FHA and VA guidelines are going to be looking for on the appraisal aspect. Again, appraisals aren't all about value. They can actually hold up the sale too as well. All right, so we made it to the end of the video. Are you feeling overwhelmed? You might be a little bit, but again, that is what the list is for. That's what that link is for down below in the description. So go ahead and click on it, print out this sheet so that you have an understanding again of what is going on. If you're a realtor, memorize some of this stuff. Uh, because it's really just awesome to know and it makes your job uh, that much easier to be able to guide your sellers or your buyers in the sale or purchase of the home. And uh, again, if you ever have any questions about any of this stuff or uh, inspection questions, uh, please feel free to give me a call. Again, I'm not a licensed appraiser. I'm just going to go ahead and mention that again, more or less for keep myself out of trouble. So if you have questions about the appraisal process, uh, go ahead and reach out to a licensed appraiser. They'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you got, but I am happy to answer what I can. 208-715-7827. And feel free to, or please actually hit that subscribe button below, click the notification bell because I like to keep you involved in what is happening here around the Treasure Valley. Especially if you do live here in the Treasure Valley, I keep you in tune to what's happening in our real estate market and how it applies to the decisions that might affect you in terms of whether or not you're thinking about selling or maybe investment properties, or maybe you're uh, looking to buy for the first time out here, or maybe you're thinking about moving to the great state of Idaho. Let this be your relocation guide because I'm going to go ahead and tell you about our wonderful cities. Again, market uh, conditions. I'll tell you about awesome restaurants to be able to go ahead and visit great recreational activities, and a whole lot more. So I look forward to the time that we do speak here in the future. And until then, I wish you all uh, many blessings. Thank you again for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And I look forward to the time that we speak in the future. Thank you so much.